Hey, what's up guys? Chris Lee back with another United Destiny Entertainment tutorial video. Hey, check this out. If you're new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to get more videos like this in the future. All right, guys, so check it out. What I'm going to be doing with this video is basically showing you guys how to start your Pro 2 sessions, whether you want to open up a session, recent sessions. I'm going to also be showing you guys how to start and create a template and save that template just in case you want to open up that same template again when you record a following week later or you know two weeks later a month later whatever the case may be this is also going to be helpful if you have like a client that you record on a regular and you don't want to be wasting a lot of time trying to set up the session every time that client come i'm going to actually show you how to set your template up so when a client do come you just open up that session template, it'll be ready to go. You and the client will just be able to record your vocals, get it done, get the next client in and be, you know, be done with it. So with that being said, also, you guys need to go ahead and go check out my other Pro 2 series videos. It's for beginners. It's for people who want to get involved with Pro 2, start using Pro 2s. Um, this is really going to help you guys learn the basics. It's going to help you guys know exactly what you need to do to get started in Pro 2s, making beats, recording vocals, maybe some guitars, whatever the case may be. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this video, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so once you open up Pro Tools and you launch Pro Tools, I'll always recommend that you right click Pro Tools and run as administrator so you don't have any issues. You're going to come up with this dialog window here. You're going to see a couple options that says open session, open recent session, create blank session and create session from template. I'm going to briefly go through this real quick to kind of help you guys get familiar with it and know exactly what it does and then in further videos in the future i'll show you guys how to do more advanced stuff if i need to do that so when you utilize open session it's basically going to help you navigate through the computer through your hard drives to find where your session folder is to go ahead and open up any sessions that you possibly have worked on this is beneficial if you know where your sessions are but if you don't you're gonna have to do a little research to find your sessions okay so in the process the next thing that's i feel is the most helpful it's open recent session. Open recent session is basically whatever Pro 2 sessions that you've recently opened in the past week or whatever order that you opened them in, it's going to pop that list up right here showing exactly which ones that you opened inside of your Pro 2s. So the most recent session that I opened was Delete Me. Uh, that was a session that I did yesterday for a tutorial. I created it. It was the last session that I opened. So I went ahead and utilized it to open up this session. So if I wanted to open up that session right now, it's right here in my face. I don't have to navigate through my hard drive or through my computer to get to it. It's right here in my face. I know exactly what it is. I just click it, open it, boom, quick, fast, and simple. Create blank session is exactly what it says. Create a blank session. So that means you're going to start this session from scratch. It's not going to have any tracks in it, any instrument tracks, any master faders, any auxiliary tracks, none of that. It's going to be all from scratch. You can basically go in and add whatever you want based on the client's need or based on your needs for the session. You will know exactly what you want to start the session with. This is going to be beneficial when you want to go ahead and create a template for yourself in the future. Okay, so now... In a process, why you don't want to do this every single time is when you're recording a client, it takes time to set a session up. When you're working with industry artists or any artists in general, they are going to want you to have your session set up and ready to go. They're not going to want to be waiting for you to actually get the session set up. And if you are slow setting sessions up, this will really tick a client off. So don't do this. Go ahead and have your session templates set up, ready to go, and that's going to be most beneficial. That's what I'm about to show you next. Create session from template, okay? That's basically saying that in this process, Pro Tools gives you a bunch of templates depending on the artist, musician that you are, live sound guy that you are. This create session template is going to be beneficial for a lot of people. If you are new to Pro Tools and you've never started with Pro Tools, you don't know what to get started with. So if you opened up like a guitar session, as you can see here, it has ballads, uh, it has ballad guitar, blues guitar, metal guitar. What is basically going to do is import some uh, tracks, instrument tracks, vocal tracks, and other different tracks to make it already set up and preset up with pre-effects to help you go ahead and just plug in record and start doing your thing now 
it may have what you need. It may not have what you need, but it's just going to be a starter kit. Okay. In a process, you're going to see different ones for music, like different genres of music, hip hop, house, jazz, pop, etc. Post-production 5.1 is surround is going to be beneficial for you. If you are doing like um, post-production for say, if you're mixing like a, a movie or a short film or whatever the case may be, it's going to have everything set up for you. Same thing with record and mix. It's going to have 24 tracks. Um, it's going to have EQ tracks, dynamic effects on it, like compressors and things like that. And it's going to have effects sense for like reverbs and delays. Just depends. Whichever option you choose, that's what you're going to have. So a number of 24 tracks or 32 or whatever the case may be. Now you can also set up your own, which is very beneficial for me and how I work with a lot of my clients. A lot of my clients, I go ahead and set their sessions up from from scratch and then I save it as a template and every time it's time for them to come over and record I have the option of just clicking that template and having them recording on the fly and we are good to go okay so that's what I'm going to show you right now so the first thing that you want to do is you want to create a blank session uh, I recommend that you start with wave uh, wave is pretty compatible across the board for every DAW and as far as the bit depth, I always recommend that you start with 24 for the bit depth and 48 hertz kilohertz for the sample rate. That's going to give you a nice little range to start with uh, for dynamics when you're recording your sessions. If you started off with 44.1 and 16 bit, you're not going to have that much dynamic range. And when you start to record vocals or instrumentation or anything like that, you may run into some distortion. So a quick tip is the higher the sample rate, the more dynamic range you're going to get. And the more you're going to get out of your vocals, you can be more dynamic. You can be louder with your instruments, your vocals, whatever the case may be. But a good starting point is always 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. And then once you finally export, which we'll get into more later and in, uh, more future videos, you want to export at 44 one kilohertz, 16 bits for like industry standard for music stuff. If it's DVDs, then it might be 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, etc. Okay, so, but we're not going to focus on that right now. So the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and create blank session. So the first thing that you want to do is go to file new session. And we're going to create a blank session. And then we're going to navigate. We're going to hit okay. And then we're going to find like, let's go to our M drive or something like that. And we're going to go to pro two second space. And we're going to go to session just delete me too. How about that? Type that in. Then it's going to allow you to create your session from scratch. Then in the process, what you want to go ahead and do, as you can see, this session has nothing in it. So if you hit control plus button, there is no tracks in here whatsoever. So how you want to do this? I'm going to show you guys how to do this really quick. You can go up and go to track new and click here. And it's going to bring it up to where you can start importing the number of tracks that you want and the kind of tracks that you want. You have different options from aux input, master fader, MIDI track, instrument track, etc. So say we wanted to set this up for a vocalist. This is what I'm going to do really quick. So you want to hit shift control in. We want to put in six tracks. And then if you hit control over left and right, we want to have it as a mono track. But if you hit left and right it'll switch it from stereo and mono we're going to leave it as mono because we're doing vocal tracks and then we want to have six audio tracks so we can leave that as well and then if we want to add more we're going to say we're going to add um matter of fact let's make that seven tracks okay seven tracks and then we want to add like some auxiliary tracks as well bus tracks so we can set up like some reverb or some delay or something like that okay so we're going to hit shift control in again we want at least three auxiliary tracks, hit control over, make those stereo. And if you hit control up and down, it's going to change it from MIDI, master fader, instrument track, and audio track. Auxiliary tracks. So we want auxiliary tracks, right? Auxiliary inputs. And then we want to do it one more time because say we want like a master fader. So we're going to hit control over and we're going to change this to master fader for our final output of our tracks. And we're just gonna hit enter. Okay, so after you hit enter, boom, you have the number of tracks that you want. But what if you say, oh, but I wanna add like some pianos or something like that. So we're gonna hit shift control in. 
We're going to do control over to make it stereo. We're going to put in two instrument tracks. Okay. If you had MIDI information to import, then you would choose MIDI. But we're going to choose instrument tracks so we can use our VSTs to play like some pianos or strings or whatever the case may be. Hit create. Boom. There's my instrument tracks. So now your session is set up exactly the way that you want it. So I like to have my instrument tracks at the top. And I'm just going to type this in as piano. And if you hit control over again. It'll let you to it'll let you type in the next one bass. Now you want to name all your tracks. That way everything is laid out for you, setting it up for the session template. Okay, so the next thing, the first track that we want to name it is uh, we want to name this as lead. Okay, and then we want to do um, pre hook one. You want to double up on your harmonies. Pre hook two. Pre hook three. Or say if you just did pre-hook, right? And then say for the next tracks, we wanted those to be for the hook. So you would name them. I do H1 for hook one. Hook two. Hook three. Hook four. That also stands for harmony for me, okay? Now we want to name the auxiliary track. So we want one to be like reverb. Delay and like modulation or whatever. So just put mod. Master fader, you can name it as final out, final out, and hit OK. Boom. So now everything is named, good to go. That way, when I set up this template, everything is going to automatically be set up and ready to go for when I open up the next session. But it gets better. What if you wanted to add? plugins that way if you know you utilize the same plugins then what you can do in the process is import the plugins that you want and then once you save the template next time you open up the session it's going to have those same plugins everything mapped out for you ready to go all right so one thing that i like to do is to set up my lead and my my lead and all my vocals so i want to shift click at the bottom so check this out if i clicked here you want to hold down shift and then hold shift and click the last vocal and then hold down alt with it shift and alt and then go to interface and change the input to input one that's going to change all your inputs to whatever your interface is okay all my inputs are set up ready to go so now in the process what i want to do next is just go in and start setting my vocals up for my harmonies to be panned so i just want to have my harmony here 50 have my other harmony here 50 over here have like this one 60 or 70 or whatever long as you have two of them that match the same 70 to the left 70 to the right so it can be in stereo image okay and then same thing here 100 here and 100 here now you you can change these numbers to whatever uh you want them to be but this is what i like to rock with and then say if i wanted to go in and add like um my main vocal i wanted like an eq on one of them so i'm just gonna put a quick seven band eq and then say if i wanted another you want to hold down the all button drag it over click it and drag it over to the next one all your tracks so i got all my eq set up and then say if i wanted like a compressor to go with it boom i'm just gonna add a compressor with it and say if i wanted a compressor just on one of them that's fine now if you went to your auxiliary track and you wanted to set up like a reverb, boom, your reverb is set up. And say if you change the input to your reverb, you want to go here and you want to go down to bus. So on your auxiliary track, you want to change your reverb to, it'll say bus one and two, three and four, five and six. Mine says reverb, delay, and chorus because I've already done this in the past. So we're just going to change it to reverb or bus one and two. Okay, now that that's set up, now you want to go to your actual sins, your sins on your vocal track. Click this little dot here and go to the, the little arrow or the little dot and you go down to bus, go to reverb stereo, turn this up, boom. 
Just turn it up to uh, whatever number that you want because you can adjust it later. So say I got reverb on it, saying I go through and set everything up the way that I want it. So I got like my reverb going, I got all my tracks going, everything seems to be good to go. Now it's like, yo, I love everything I set up in the session. I just want to save it as a template now. How can I save it as a template? Well, I'll show you. You want to go to file. You want to go save template as. Here, you want to go ahead and create either reveal session template folder or add a category. I added my own category, so you can just name it as whatever you want. YouTube session is the one that I named it yesterday. So if you name it as like, you know, YouTube session or whatever, you just want to go here and you can change like a name. Um, vocal. Vocal hot, you know, something like that. Vocal hot or whoever's name. OK, and then once you do that, you can include media if you have media in there. We don't have any at the moment, but if you had any type of things in there, vocals or any, any other things going on, then it will have all that stuff in there. And then we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And then once you save it, you can just name it as um, whatever you can name it as, you know, vocal hot, you know, something like that. And once you save that. Once we go up to the top and we go to file new session, create session from template. Even when you open up Pro Tools, you're going to have this option. Now, if you want to save your template, go ahead and go file. Go ahead and go to save as template. And then we're going to create this as add category. And we're going to name this as vocal hotness. Add category, change it. We're going to add another one. And we're going to pick vocal hotness and we're going to give it a name as beast. And once I save that, it's saved. So I want to go up to file new. And then if I go down to vocal hotness, you can see my template right here. It says vocal hotness and it says beast. Once you click that, it says, do you want to save this? The answer is no, because I already created it. We're going to name this as beast. So name your session. Name it as whatever you want it, and it's going to open up, and boom, look at that. All the tracks that we name, the instrument tracks that we imported, the plugins, the EQs, the compressors, the reverbs, everything is already there, set, ready to go. Guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. Leave me some comments. Did this video help you out? What could I have done to help you learn more in this process with this tutorial? If it's something else that you want to know, just leave me some comments and I'll help you out in the other video. Please share these videos so other people can learn how to be really proficient and effective using Pro Tools because it's a great doll to record vocals and instrumentation in. Uh, be sure to go check out my other Pro Tools videos and I'll be sure to help you guys out more in the future. But hit that notification bell as well as subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. The more you do that, the more love I get from YouTube, from you sharing this video. I'm trying to get to at least, at least 100K subscribers. Thank you for watching this video. Night, Dusty Entertainment.